I, we had posed a question out, out on Instagram to kind of kids, what, what do you guys think, what do we want to hear us talk about? Um, and someone asked me, what do you think, going into a full season now, there was a lot of guys in the previous COVID year that were really successful um, in a shortened bubble concept. Um, and now they're going to have a full season on this new pedestal of, hey, you're a great pitcher. Um, and I wanted to ask you, because this is a very interesting question, who do you think is going to keep excelling versus who's going to flop? Because I think in, in that little bubble, it was easier for people to go out there and just give it their all in a, in a half season, not even really. It's almost yeah. like a third of a season. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the easy answer, and it's mostly because of the money, mm-hmm. is I think Bauer's going to be a flop. I agree. And, and I don't think that that means that Bauer is going to be a guy who all of a sudden gets absolutely shelled for like a five ERA. Mm-hmm. But it goes back to, you know, last year, every Yankees fan is looking at Garrett Cole's numbers playing for Houston, and they're like, that's what we're getting. Yeah. And it's like, well, you're probably going to get what she, he was with the Pirates mm-hmm. because every pitcher who was going to Houston was magically throwing way better. So we yeah. won't talk about the fact that maybe there were things no, that's a different topic. going on. <laughs> um, we'll just go with what, what we trended. And then he was a really good pitcher, but he was not the dominant pitcher that he had been up until that point, right? right, that got him that big money. So every Yankees fan was like, oh, so was Garrett Cole worth the biggest contract a pitcher had in baseball? Yes and no, right? There was no way that you were going to, unless you were, you went out and you were the best pitcher, right? Mm-hmm. You can't justify it. Like DeGrom, DeGrom comes out, you give me more money, you give me less money, I absolutely smoke you. Uh, so I think Bauer has no chance of reproducing what that was because it was his best season of his entire career. Mm-hmm. And I'm never going to say that a guy is going to be able to replicate his best all the time. Yeah. Right? Like, I can't look and say, oh, you know, DeGrom had a 1-7 ERA. He'll re- re- reproduce that. Mm-hmm. Like, no, there's yeah. a reason why we keep these stats is because they average out. Right. That's why it's called a batting average, right? we gotta yeah. we got to take all this stuff into account. So Bauer's a guy who I think is going to – gonna take a step back who's your your take take a step back guy well here here's something that's interesting with Bauer and, and some of the names that I have uh, written down as people who are kind of questionable the the four guys I have are Bieber Giolito Maeda and Bauer and what's okay. interesting about them and the fact that COVID played a role in this is that with COVID everyone was kind of geographically limited to who they played so the majority of those guys pitched against AL or NL central teams which are all pretty weak in the scheme of the leagues. Yes. So they were also more successful facing not as great competition. Yes. So now Bauer's going into one of the best conferences in baseball, yes. or divisions in baseball, um, and now he's going to have to have a full season of facing some studs. Yep. He's going to face the Padres a ton, yep. and they're going to bat him around a little bit. Yep. So I, I agree with you. I think Bauer's a flop. Um, I actually think Bieber is going to have another great year yeah. because he's he's still dealing with the same teams. Giolito, same thing. Um, I, and, I, and I think they were kind of – they were trending that way. Giolito had adjusted his mechanics the year prior, um, and you saw some some great stuff from him, and I think he's got a lot of potential. And Bieber is just – he's a machine. I think it, it's time his time to shine. What do you, what do you think of, of that team? Which team? Bieber's team. I think they're sneaky good. I actually – I think they're sneaky good too. Yeah, I think they're going to surprise some people. They have a lot of talent. It's younger. Um, and, and I think the, the pitching staff is a, is a little questionable that, other than Bieber. Um, I think Tristan McKenzie is going to be a star. Um, so I, I think they're going to they surprise also, some people. They also have, they also have, I think, sneaky good talent in that the Lindor trade was better for them, in the sense that their whole team, their their team was so weak depth wise mm-hmm. that they needed to get depth before yeah. top end. Yep. Uh, and now that they have. Uh, you know Rosario, I still think is a really good player. Yes, I think moving him away from New York, where he's under the scrutiny of New York, yeah. will will actually help him become a better player. And I think his upside is is solid. Um, and then uh, Jimenez was the Mets' best prospect, and he acquitted himself well in a shortened season and looked like he can play. Then add on top of that, like you just said, I think Bieber in a whole year is going to be a good pitcher. I think Tristan McKenzie's got a chance to be real good. And now all of a sudden that team looks stronger from from guys. So I, I would agree. I think Bieber hangs a, a good season up. Mm-hmm. But, again, it's relative. Yes. Does that mean I think he's going to be better than Bauer this year? I don't know. I could see them both putting up similar seasons. Mm-hmm. 
but one guy's getting paid forty million dollars a year, and it's there. That's just not worth the same amount of money. Yeah. Right. So like that's how it's relatively to me a flop. Mm-hmm. Who's somebody? Who's somebody who hit well in the shortened year? I'm throwing you on the spot now. Mm-hmm. Who's somebody that you can think of who who had an amazing season with their bat that you don't know if they're going to carry? This actually, this is somebody who I've been high on for a while that a lot of people were questionable on, but I could tell from the jump was a star. Luke Voigt. Okay. You Hope. think Voigt is legit full time? Yes, I actually do. Wow. I, th- I think he's a in a lot of aspects. I think he's a better hitter than Judge for just the way he uh, takes his approach, how his at bats are. Um, and was gonna listening to some of his interviews and stuff, and it seems like he's really progressing into being a, a phenomenal baseball player. Yeah. So, so here's the here's the funny thing about it, right? Okay. How old is Luke Voigt? Uh, I'm not sure, but mid late twenties. Luke Voigt is 30 years old, 19 days ago. So, I I am with you to some degree, mm-hmm. but I don't foresee. Luke Voigt being able to put up the 863 OPS he put up last year. Okay. I I I think I think I think that's a bad take cuz I think that man is an old dude. He made his MLB debut in 2017 at age 26. Mm-hmm. And he has been okay in some limited time. I think he's a good player. I just don't know if I foresee him you know, well, let me. What's your expectation? Because you just said better than Judge. So are we talking better than Judge? And he plays 160 games. I think he's definitely going to play more games than Judge for yes, sure. Yes. Well, I mean that's because well, Judge is. Well, that's what I'm saying. So made out of the call me Mr. Glass. He's, he's more. He's more uh, reliable, and I think he just has. He's he's not up there to only hit bombs where I think Judge is like in in their approach to hitting. He like he just he does more. I feel like he has more quality at bats, and he just looks like he's been progressing. Like you said, yeah, maybe he's thirty, but he's only really just got like like I was listening to his interview. He only just got a true starting job as hey I I locked up this position this year, and I th- and he was saying and I and I totally think it's true having that weight off your shoulders of not having to oh, I have to keep fighting to get this position and being able to focus on your craft and get better and become a true stud, I think that's going to help him. Yeah, and I, I, I would agree with that. I, I think Luke Voigt has proven that he's an MLB-level player and he deserves an opportunity to be a starter in the league. I don't think that Voigt's all of a sudden going to become an all-star level player. right? I don't think that the season that he put up last year where he hit 22 home runs in 213 at-bats... I don't think that's the guy he is. Uh, his best OPS year was 2018 with the Yankees. When you look at just that time with the Yankees that year, he had 1,095 OPS. He had 14 home runs and 132 at bats. That's still a lower pace home run wise mm-hmm. than last year. Uh, well, that's or, why or last year was a little ahead. different, because, and that's why I think that it, you know it shortens so people take bigger swings. You do all this stuff. Yeah, whatever. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I do think in, in in expanded 162, I think he's a, a 30 home run guy. I think he is a, a roughly seven 800 OPS kind of guy, and I think he can be a star there. I think and he's got a great glove too. So that's that's a lot of good pieces. So stay in New York. Do we think that Pete Alonso was a one hit wonder? That's a great question. Um, I think this is a huge year to tell us that because, yeah, I, I listen, I discount the 2020 season a ton. I think, it, you know, he came off his massive rookie campaign, um, and I really hope that he kind of brings, reins himself in a little bit and just tries to go back to just meeting the baseball and, like, let's just, let's just get hits before we try to hit 55 home runs every time we get up to the plate. Yeah, and, and that's kind of, for me, he, he's 26 years old, so he's not super young. Right, made his debut late in life. Mm-hmm. Uh, that that first year, I don't think that there was a reasonable expectation that he would match exactly it. Mm-hmm. Uh, his big problem, looking at it from last year, his power was down tremendously. Yeah, uh, his OPS ended up in eight seventeen, which is still reasonable. Yeah. But he batted two thirty, and one of the big problems that he had when he was coming up was people worried about the, will the batting average holds mm-hmm. enough for his power to be there, and will his defense hold enough for him to be able to stay on the field. I think he did that. I would say that uh, I I think the the shine of Pete 
is down for me a little bit. Mm-hmm. I don't think that Pete looks like the guy he was uh, his rookie year. Yeah. I don't think we're going to see that guy on a consistent basis all the time. Mm-hmm. Again, I think he, him and Luke Voigt have similar things with Alonzo having more power. Uh, but I think the one thing that he has that is going to really help him is Lindor. Yes. I think having a guy who can be the actual face of the team, who's been a face of the team and produced as that guy, mm-hmm. will allow him to take a back seat because his rookie year he became the face of their position players. You know, he passed Conforto as the best hitter on the team, quote-unquote, at that time. Yeah. Uh, now he's going to get to be the third or fourth best player in the lineup. Mm-hmm. And I think being able to sit there will help him produce. Yes. Uh, but I, again, got to wonder, you know, I, I'm with you that 2020 was an odd year, but it also, it shows more of who somebody is. You can see some things. You can, I have concerns. Yes. I, I have doubts too. on Pete. I would have liked to see him. And I think also he, I, I don't totally remember the beginning of his 2019 year, but I think he's the kind of guy where he needs to get a, a good amount of at-bats before he really starts clicking. Um, and I don't think he really got that in the 2020 season. Um, but what I, I would like to would have liked to see from him last year towards the end of the season, would, and I think he was doing a little bit, was kind of just trying to adjust and just trying to get hits. And, I, and like you said, I think having Lindor is going to help him not try to have to do everything, just be able to kind of keep the train moving, get you know doubles, home runs here and there, but like just trying to be a good hitter. Um, and I think that's going to make it a little bit easier for him to get into that groove and be uh, you know the hitter he was from 2019. Yeah, and I think another guy who a shortened season didn't help uh, who I think is going to explode, uh, and I think last year hurts him more, Vlad Guerrero Jr. Yes. Uh, I think Vlad Guerrero Jr., he, he made some progress from even his rookie year mm-hmm. where he got a little bit better at a few key areas. But with a shortened season, the erratic schedule, and him only being a 21-year-old guy at the time, trying to navigate what's going on as a younger player is difficult when you're still trying to get your footing. Yeah. Uh, so looking at Vlad, he, he's a guy who... You know, he has Tatis stuff in his body. Yeah, definitely. Right? He's he's got he's got that 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 flair, that flavor. And his team, he's gonna get an opportunity with Springer being there to not have to be that guy out in the outfield that really carries him. Yeah. I think that's another guy who is short in season. We're gonna see him really be able to pop mm-hmm. coming out of this this COVID season and into this new world. Yeah. Um he, he uh, thinned up a little bit, now he kinda looks a little more athletic, look like he's ready to kind of make a splash this year. Baseball lifestyle, that's my lifestyle. <laughs>